damn it. Hey guys, welcome to another D20 Sundays. Oh, how's it going? Uh, as always, please like and subscribe if at any point you feel that this video helped you at all or just entertain you. Uh, I'm working on towards getting a new camera. I'm almost there. Uh, I'll probably start off with buying a smaller, better webcam than I currently have, but it produces much better quality. Uh, but we'll see about it and eh, give me a few weeks. Uh, so, on to this episode, which is the time that I was that guy. Sort of. Uh, now, I wasn't Steve level of that guy. And if you want to know what I mean by that, just go watch the three-parter video that I put on, like, so long ago. Which was essentially that guy. The, the one guy who stressed me so much as a dungeon master. Who made me want to stop playing and stop being a dungeon master for a short amount of time. Because he was just that stressful to me. Uh I'm actually stressing a little bit at remembering that, so we're just going to press, push it back in, release, calm, good. Right. So, what do I mean by the time that I was that guy? Well, there's been a total of three times that I've had to essentially pull a Dungeon Master aside and say, hey, we have some problems. And it wasn't, like, malicious, it wasn't, like trying to make them feel bad or make them feel small or at any point destroy their confidence in what they've created. But it was more of, hey, I'm probably not the best player for you to have if you are not an experienced dungeon master. And that's the key thing. You see, when you have been playing Dungeons & Dragons for a long period of time, for my instance about eight years now, and if you had been a dungeon master for most of that time, as I have for about four to five of those years now, um, you, you start kind of noticing problems when it comes to being a player. Such as uh, there was a time in a campaign where I was told that this holy water that I was handling, uh, I was a cleric, and, you know, I was told if I were to essentially introduce it into a well of water, or to, or if I was introduced into a well of water and dilute it, it would essentially cause a, you know, a large birth of Asimar and so on, because, you know, it's my goddess's divine water, and it's helping, you know, influence the populace. Um, it would also help cure diseases and so on. But at the same time, I was also told if anyone were to drink it directly, uh, if they were not pure of heart, they would die. So I was like, okay. I, I can accept that. I'll just have to be very careful with this. So, uh, fast forward about three or four sessions, uh, we come across a man who is, you know, diseased. Like, he's got some sort of plague of some sort on him, and he's trying to give us a warning, but he's dying so it's like, okay, uh, I take the holy water that I've been holding on to, and I dilute it in uh, just two drops into the wine that I have, and I give it to him. That should bless him and, you know, do all that. And the dungeon master went pale. Because he needed this part of the campaign to where it didn't work. So he said, well, it doesn't work. It doesn't cure. I was like, oh, I'm like, hold on. You, you told me that this holy water, if I diluted in water or wine or so on and fed it or gave it to someone, it would cure them of any disease that they were given. He's like, well, yes. And he's like, you also said it had the ability to remove curses. He's like, yes. He's like, I know this because I wrote it all down and you saw me write it down. He's like, yes, but it doesn't work. I was like, hold on and it's like it was one of those moments where I couldn't accept that it didn't work and in most cases I probably would have let it go but the fact that I saw his expression of oh no he's using that that expression told me I found a plot hole I found something the dungeon master was not accounting for and because I don't like plot holes. I don't. It's one of the reasons why 
I, I don't like going to the movies very often because if I see a plot hole, I'm like, mm, no. And if I see really big plot holes or multiple plot holes, I'm like, mm, no. And, and that's just how my brain works. And I'm like, okay, I can see that he's panicking. I can see that he wasn't prepared for me to do this. And then he wasn't prepared for the next question that came out of my mouth. Do I know why it doesn't work? And he was like, well, roll a religion. I roll pretty high. This is back in Pathfinder. And I rolled like a 30-something. I rolled really high. And I had like a bunch of modifiers and so on. And I'm like, I should know. And he's like, yeah, um, this curse or disease, whatever it is, is a... Uh, from a power far beyond your goddesses. And I'm like, uh, hold on. I can kind of understand that, but would I be able to tell, is it necromatic? Is it this, is it that, and so on. And no matter how many times I asked questions, he became more and more quiet. And then I finally asked him, did, did you write yourself into a corner? And all the other players, like, were kind of thinking of it. And they, they didn't want to say it, though. And he was like, it doesn't work. And then he just moves on. He's like, DM, hand wave, ignore all of that. It doesn't work. It frustrates me some. So I'm like, okay, okay. So we continue on with the adventure a little bit more. And then we run more and more into these plague problems, and or these disease problems, whatever that's afflicting these people... I'm thinking, it's like, ah, oh. well, my goddess's holy water diluted didn't work. Well, then we end up fighting against a, essentially, some sort of eldritch knight or something. Uh, he was throwing, essentially, warlock spells at us, and we were fighting him. And, um, uh, I threw my holy water on him. The whole thing. Undiluted, threw it on him. And I looked at the dungeon master... And I was like, now what you said was, he's like, I know what I said. I was like, okay. Doesn't work. Like, mm. Now, just so you know, between the last time it didn't work and this time it didn't work, because there was a number, a good bit of time between those, I think actually two sessions, uh, I delved more into what he had written for us for like essentially campaign notes. And I read more and more through it. The goddess I chose was designated as the oldest of all the gods. Uh, she was the goddess of life, mercy, and healing. And it's like, okay, well, she's the oldest of all the gods, so she's the most powerful. She's the most widely worshipped. What could be mo more powerful than her? It, it became like a problem, you know, the pokingness. It's like I'm poking at plot holes. I'm like, hey, you know, something's not adding up here. Uh, we pr pr proceed on a little bit more. You know, DM hand wave again. It's like, no, if you don't do that, it doesn't work. You don't do that. That was the, the first two words. It's like, you, or you don't. It's like, I don't what? I don't throw the holy water on him? Why not? So, progress on a little forward after beating the crap out of him. Uh, we eventually find the, uh, essentially the mastermind behind the, the whole thing. By this point, we were like 12 sessions in. Uh, and it's, it's an arc thing. You know, we go through one arc, through another, through another. And this mastermind who is, the, you know, causing all the plagues and so on... He's just actually a super powerful necromancer. There is no divine power behind him whatsoever. And I just love, finally look at him and I'm like, dude, the holy water should have worked. And the campaign just started falling apart there. Because I was that guy. I finally got tired of not only the first instance, the second instance, but like other minor inconsistencies of other things. It's like, I chose this domain to be a purely dedicated healer who specializes in removing curses, diseases, and injuries, and plagues, and whatever, you know, 
he is a healer. He knows his medicine. He knows his religion. He knows all of it. He should be able to cure these things. He should be able to take care of these things. But time and time again, I am essentially denied my ability to heal someone. And it's like, okay, but I have a divine artifact at this point, essentially with the holy water that has been blessed by my goddess, and it's not working. I became that guy. Because it's like, no, look, I'm not moving on this subject because this is a problem. If one of the artifacts or the main staples of my character does not work for any reason whatsoever because, oh, well, this one's resistant to it. Well, how is he resistant to the will of a goddess? He would have to have the power of another god behind him. Well, turns out he didn't. He just had a necromancer behind him. I became more frustrated. I eventually, you know, pulled the Dungeon Master aside. I'm like, look, just level with me. Why? What? Why? And his only reason was is because it would ruin the campaign. It would ruin the campaign because he had nothing prepared if I had solved those problems to begin with. If I was able to cure every single person who came across that we came across of this disease, we would have no real need to go after the person who was causing it. I could just go by, drop two drops of holy water in the wells, and go on to the next town, and that town is taken care of. I was like, okay, I can understand that, but why did you give it to me to begin with then? If having the item would cause such a big problem with the plot, why did I receive it in the first place? Essentially, because it wasn't just the, those main points, it was a number of other small, minor things throughout the whole thing, to where I eventually just kind of had enough, and I just like, look, just be honest with me. And by having the Dungeon Master, even though it was one-on-one, -on -one, the two of us talk it out to try and work out a better plan, the fact that I had been constantly you know, spotting plot holes and I had brought them to his attention or I had said something about it at the table, I was chipping away at his confidence without even realizing that I was doing it. And... I was that guy. I didn't mean to be, but I was. So, from that and a couple of other times, total of three, uh, as a warning to all, who might want me at their table. Please be more experienced than I am. Because if you're not. Might have a problem. Now. For instance. Uh, in the rare occasions. Uh, the living handbook. As I call him. Uh, Kelker. Or Regnus uh, Willow. From the Surskin campaign. Regnus is the dungeon master for another campaign. That I'm in. Uh, I play Ignis Fimmond. A cleric of Alicure who goes around with an alms box asking for money for the poor. Uh, which he still can't believe that I got over like 200 gold pieces and I kept none of it and I literally donated it all to the church. It's now become a joke amongst uh, myself and a number of other party members. It's just alms for the poor. Uh, he is not as experienced as me, but he knows the rules better than me, which is the reason why I call him the Living Handbook. Uh, Kelker, which is his real name, uh, Kelker is much more methodical when it comes to writing out his campaigns. As such, I haven't seen an inconsistency in his campaign that caused a lot of problem. More of like, I see an inconsistency, but within like the first 15 minutes afterwards, it's filled. It's like, okay, I can see why. He's much more methodical and thought out when it comes to his creating of his campaigns and his characters and so on, that I, for the most part, don't have a problem with him. And I don't have a problem with the way he dungeon masters because I see the way he thinks and I can follow along with it without saying, ooh, there's a plot hole. Ooh, there's a plot hole. Because there's not really, ooh, there's a, oh, never mind, it's been filled. And that makes me happy. Now, there are a couple of moments where it's like, mm, mm, hold on, no, don't think that's right. But 
as I said, you know, he does it well enough to where it's like, he doesn't wave his hands like, no, it doesn't work. It's more of, oh, that's strange. Why wouldn't it work that way? And it, Or more of, huh, that is weird. How did he get away with that? And that's the way you should handle it. But at the same time, the way you handle it and the way it is needs to be working together. Running a campaign with your players, the story, it's all like one giant machine with all these different cogs. If just one of the cogs don't click right with the others, it's going to cause that noticeable tick throughout the whole thing. Anyways, that's it for this episode where I was that guy. Catch you next time.